Three weeks ago, I needed a set of pedals. I needed them fast and I needed them cheap. I remembered Fanatec has a load cell version of their club sport pedals. So without further research, I bought a set. At just 200 euros, I got the three pedal combo, which included a load cell brake pedal. For those who don't know, a load cell brake pedal is basically like having a bathroom scale as a brake. Cheaper pedals usually use a potentiometer to determine braking force. While marketing will have you believe that this helps use muscle memory for braking, the truth is that a potentiometer spring combo in your cheapo pedals also requires the exact same force for the same amount of braking input each time. The main benefit to this load cell is less pedal travel and potentially a more realistic feel and more adjustability. I'm going to start this review by talking about the build. The CSL pedals are mostly metal with only the pedal faces being a smooth, curvy plastic. Believe it or not, this is a good thing as it'll chew up your socks less quickly. You can buy a tuning kit with metal pedal face plates, but those don't offer any additional tuning, so I don't really get why anyone would buy those. While all metal, the pedals are made from sheet metal, so no fancy billet bits here. However, they are strong enough and functional, so overall the build quality is excellent at this price point. Also, unlike some very expensive pedals, these come with a heel plate which is super strong and heavy. This plate isn't required, but it helps with spacing and it hides the telephone cable spaghetti underneath. This plate also helps if you don't have a rig to mount to, but the rubber feet aren't enough to stop the pedals from sliding. You need something to keep them in place. I like the finish and the build quality, but the two small rubber bits in the front always come off and Fanatec should use some stronger glue here. Now I just declared my love to this heel plate, but would it really hurt to add a few more mounting holes? Fanatec could triple the amount of holes in this plate without it costing them anything and the plate would still be plenty stiff. I could just drill more holes myself, but I really shouldn't have to. As some of you may have noticed, I have my pedals the wrong way round. The fact that each of these pedals are individual modules that you connect to each other means fun configurations like this are possible. If anything, having your brake on the left improves the cable management because the brake and clutch cable no longer need to cross. I have my pedals connected to my PC over USB, but if you need console compatibility, you can use another one of these telephone cables to connect to your Fanatec wheelbase. As long as you have at least your throttle pedal connected, you're good to go. Let's discuss the pedals one by one. The throttle uses a 12-bit Hall Effect sensor and feels pretty smooth. The travel is average in length and it can't be adjusted. You can adjust the height of the pedal but not the depth and even cheap Logitech pedals have plastic spacers to change the depth between pedals. I feel like the standard height was okay when wearing just socks with size 45 feet but with shoes on it's a little on the short side. Luckily you can slide the pedal plates up a little bit. The spring force is slightly heavier than I'd like for a throttle pedal but it could also be much lighter than you would like for a throttle pedal. Sadly this is also not adjustable. Other than that, this is a super basic throttle pedal, so there's not much more to say. The clutch pedal is actually the brake pedal before you add the load cell to your shopping basket. It's basically exactly the same as the throttle, except it has a little foam wedge in there for a slightly stiffer feel. The plastic plate is a little wider, but it's really just a slightly stiffer throttle and it feels nothing like a real car's clutch or brake pedal except if your car needs some bleeding of course. This leaves us with the brake pedal, the 140 euro option to your 80 euro pedal set. Because this one uses a load cell rather than a magnetic sensor, it's built a little differently, but it still fits in with the overall aesthetic. The pedal plate is the same as the clutch and instead of foam, there are some rubber bits to stiffen the pedal. Fanatec doesn't sell any different durometer parts to change the feel, nor is there any adjustment built in other than pedal plate height. That said, the way they come out of the box is good enough for a budget load cell brake. You can adjust the maximum force needed in software and I found 60% of load cell maximum was about right to match the feel I got from these rubbers. Anything higher than 60% and I was smashing through the rubber's elasticity in a weird way, it gave this weird travel to force curve. 
it almost did a better job of feeling like a clutch than the clutch pedal itself at 100% force. I would recommend finding someone or somewhere to try out these pedals before you buy because again there is so little adjustability in the brake. What I feel like Fanatec could have added to this 140 euro brake pedal is a vibration motor. This costs them very little to add but it makes a huge difference when driving without ABS or when trail braking and I might look into adding a little vibration motor myself. That said, I feel like they're good enough for me for now. I could do with a light spring followed by harder rubbers, but I think I'll botch something like that in the near future. The consistency, smoothness and accuracy is there and for a 200 euro pedal set, that's sufficient. What I miss more than anything with these is adjustability, because I can't change the depth or angle of the pedal plates and spacing options are too limited. With all that in mind, Fanatec isn't the only company selling pedals, so how do they stack up? Well, for one, these are cheaper than the load cell offerings from Moza, Acetec, Logitech and of course the high-end brands. Neither of the similarly priced pedals offer much customization either. Fanatec is well established and that's got to be worth something as well. Performance-wise, I don't really have any other pedals to do back-to-back -back testing with, so let me know in the comments which pedals you'd like me to check out. I'd love to try out more high-end offerings, as pedals are probably the most important part of your sim racing setup. The main question then is if these are worth getting or if you should go to a more high-end set. And sadly, I can't make that decision for you. I don't regret getting these, but they do leave me longing for more. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Please do the whole like, share, subscribe thing, and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.